Hello listeners, welcome to the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon podcast. Today I'm at a special place. I'm at the Malaysia Competition Commission and I have the CEO here with me as well. And if you've been listening, I've been talking to business leaders across Asia, from Malaysia to Singapore to Vietnam. And today is a very special episode where I want to talk to MyCC. So for, for those who don't know, I want to do a quick introduction about MyCC. So MyCC, M-Y-C-C, is the Malaysia Competition Commission. It is an independent body that was established under the Competition Commission Act 2010 to enforce the Competition Act 2010 as well. So later we'll dive into it. Uh, I want to say hi to Iskandar. Welcome to the show. Uh, hi, hi Bob. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So uh, thanks for letting us do this. Yes. And yeah, yeah. so for all our guests, right, the first question I'd like to ask yeah. <laughs> is a very funny question. Yeah. Is, uh, what is your favorite Kung Fu movie? Oh, okay. Uh, I got a few, but uh, the main one for now is Karate Kid, the latest version. That was, um, the main actor was Jackie Chan and uh, the boy was uh, Jaden Smith, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was quite a refreshing take of how it should be, you know. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Jaden Smith grew up already? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So but I, I watched that movie more than five times already. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it, it, it has a lot of um, lessons, uh, you know, uh, given at the same time in that movie. You know, it's not just about the boy, it's about Jackie Chan also, the master. You know, how he suffered because of the accident of his family. He lost his wife and son. And, you know, and then when, when he built up the car again, you know, and then, and then he destroyed it again and over and over again, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, uh, not, not, none of my guests have said the Karate Kid. Uh, and for, for the listeners, the Karate Kid has uh, many, uh, it has the 80s, 90s one. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. this one is the 2010s one. Yeah. Uh, when Jaden Smith was still young. And <laughs> like what you said, the Jackie Chan is amazing in that movie. Uh, yeah. It has this Eastern um, culture thing where we, yeah. we respect the master. Yeah. Uh, we get a bit abused by the master, yeah. but in the end, we learn Kung Fu as well. Yeah, yeah. And another one I want to ask you is uh, now we are in December, uh, almost yeah. Christmas. Uh, yeah. Have you watched <laughs> Willy Wonka? In, oh, not yet. Um, I'm, I'm going to soon. I I would like to watch it in in the cinema because you know it's, uh, you know because you know Willy Wonka the you know in in the the previous movie the first movie, it has a lot of colors right, yeah and then you know there's a lot of singing inside it uh, inside the movie so I think I should watch in the cinema. Yeah, I, I just watched it like uh, mm. a few days ago. Uh-huh. I think the whole My CC team must go and watch this movie. Wh- why? Must go because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it is about how uh, Willy Wonka started uh-huh. the chocolate factory. Uh-huh. Uh, and then uh, if you watch the trailer, you will also know that the bad guys in Willy Wonka is actually the chocolate cartel. Oh, uh, so not the have, boy anymore. Huh? No, the boy no, won't eat too yet. much. They, they want to start the factory only. <laughs> oh, uh, I see. So the new, new, cannot have a new, what, uh, new, new participant in oh, the competition. Oh, I see. So the, the cartel do a lot of things, hide the chocolate, uh, oh, corruption. Uh, and oh. then uh, the story is how he managed to fight the cartel. Oh, like, wow. Yeah, so. That will <laughs> but, be interesting. Yeah, very, very good. Oh. I, I love it. Uh, watch in IMAX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not, Let not us sponsored. watch together, yeah? Not, not sponsored, but it's uh, related <laughs> to today's topic. So that's why I, I bring it up. Right? Okay, that's yeah. good. So, so my first question, uh-huh. um, getting to the serious topic here, uh, is uh, what is my CC? Of course, everyone asks, and I've mm. been here a few times. Then mm. I start to understand more what is my yeah. CC. And, uh, you know, you, it was said that it is established under the Competition Commission Act. You can yes. also tell us a bit more about that. Uh-huh. So maybe you can start us off and tell us what is MyCC. Okay, MyCC, as you have mentioned earlier, is an independent uh, body, uh, an agency under the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Cost of Living. Yeah, um, okay, we are not just an independent body just like that. We are also, at the same time, an enforcement body we are a regulator at the same time and uh, the, our third main role is uh, we have to act as a quasi judicial body so three in one uh, basically we are all rounder okay so now um, my cc was created in april 2011 
So by now we are already uh, 12 years old. Yeah. So we are quite young, uh, young agency compared to others like Securities Commission, Bank Negara, uh, and others. <coughs> but um, our power centered around the issue of competition. Hmm. Yeah. So um, the main role of uh, my CC is to protect the process of competition. Mm. Okay. Um, how do we protect the process of competition? They say, um, you know, if you uh, watch, like to watch the Olympic, especially the 100 meters final, you know, everybody is lining up, you know, uh, at the start, and then, you know, so basically they compete with each other, right, to be the fastest man in the world. So when the when it starts, so you can see that they really compete with each other. Okay, that's what we want. We want the enterprises in the market to compete with each other, at, in a true sense, yeah. So that they be the best. Okay. So because when we protect the process of competition, there will be two groups that will benefit from that. Okay. One, the first one is us, the consumer. You and me, we are consumer. We go to a hypermarket, we buy milk, we buy uh, rice and others, right? So, if the process of competition is protected, okay, um, you will get three things. Okay, the first one is choices. Okay, just imagine when you enter a hypermarket, okay, if you, see, you want to buy coffee, right? And then you only see Nescafe. How do you feel? There's no choice. There's only one choice. You will feel angry, right? Okay. If there is uh, many types of uh, coffee, like Kopi Hang Tua, Kopi Kapal, Nescafe, Kopi Moa, Kopi Tenom, you know, all these you know, local brands, at least you can you know, make your choices, right? Uh, whether it's expensive or not, it's up to your budget. Okay. The second one is quality. Yeah, so uh, when there's process, uh, when there is competition, the producer will aim for a quality to produce a quality product, so that they can entice you to buy their products. Okay, and then the third one, when you have choices, when you have quality, yeah, in your product or services, okay, uh, then you will have competitive pricing, because they will compete each other in terms of pricing. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you will see uh, uh, suddenly that this coffee, this co uh, coffee will, will will sell at five five ringgit per hundred gram, mm. and then the other one will sell about four fifty per hundred gram, and then the the, the third one will sell about uh, seven fifty. So it's up to you. So you see, so if these three elements are there uh, at any time in the market, okay, the consumer will be very happy. They will be willing to take out their money and pay for the product or services. Okay. So the second group will be the enterprises or the industry player yeah, who produce the product and services. So when they um, really compete with each other, uh, they will innovate always. They will create new things because they know that okay, they can't sell the same old thing over and over again for many years. So people want new things, right? So, so they will innovate. Okay, then it will benefit uh, and give choices to the consumer, right? And then um, uh, the second thing is that they will continue their entrepreneurship. Yeah, it will push them to be better in that sense. You see, because being an entrepreneur and uh, you know a, a retailer is different, uh, different thing altogether. So entrepreneur is like. You have to work, uh, you know, continuously towards your goal and achieve the objective that you have set you know, along the line of the the demands of the market and whatnot. Uh, the third one is that they will become more efficient because it's important for the entrepreneur or the enterprises to be efficient because through efficiency they can cut their cost. When they cut their cost, they can earn more. You see? So if these two groups are happy, 
Okay, this uh, consumer, they fork out their money to buy goods and then the money will go to the uh, enterprises and then the enterprises will, will innovate always and then uh, will become more efficient and then in return they will pay tax to the government, they will hire people, uh, they give salary, uh, you know, uh, to certain groups that work for them and then the circle, the ecosystem will be smooth. Well, that's that's uh, very insightful. I like I like uh, uh -huh. those those examples as well. Mm. So so when I when I do interviews, I like to say this uh. Maybe I will ask you for some examples. So yeah, it's been around for thirteen years. Yeah, and uh, maybe you can uh, share some examples in a way. So I always like to use this analogy. If mm. you like to explain to the makcik curry pub, uh -huh. uh, how would you how would you explain it? And maybe give us some example also. Uh -huh. yeah. So if I go to the makcik curry pub, you know, or, or curry puff, okay, uh, curry in puff. In, uh, yeah, in English, yeah, uh, at at the stall uh, next to the road, right? Mm. Um, then I will tell uh, Machi or auntie, uh, why don't you, you know? not only sell curry puff, you can also sell other delicacies mm. at the same time. Maybe bread, uh, maybe uh, chocolate at the same time. So it will attract a uh, different group of consumers. So you give choices to the consumers. Uh, so uh, you will uh, get more money from your sales because, you know, as you know, not everybody wants to eat curry puff at that time. Maybe some of them, they love to eat chocolate uh, for their breakfast. You never know. Yeah? So when you have uh, you know, different varieties of goods uh, being sold at your stall, and then people will flock your stall, and then, uh, and then at the same time, you give uh, you know, competitive pricing. You see, maybe your chocolate is much more cheaper than Godiva in Mid Valley, right? Yeah yeah, 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 and people will flow. It's still chocolate, right? Mm. It's just the taste uh, may be different. Maybe her chocolate can be as good as Godiva. You never know. Yeah, yeah, because uh, of course she will have to compete with Godiva in some way. You see, because people oh Godiva is the one, but Godiva is very expensive. Mm. So they go for this much chocolate, and then they say oh this is as good as Godiva and then they pay half of the price, you see? So, and then in return, the, you will push the machi, oh, I, I must create something more so that I can, you know, get many, as many customers as I can. So she will create another thing, maybe nasi lemak, right? Yeah, nasi lemak, our favorite food, right? Uh, so, and then, and then she will create another thing like nasi growing, fried rice, uh, like Uncle Roger uh, love, you know, yeah? And then, uh, and then maybe other things. And then she will grow and become an entrepreneur, not just a seller at the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like uh, nasi, uh, yeah. nasi lemak also. Yeah. I also like curry puff. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think uh, to your point, right? So yeah. for my CC's role, is yeah. you are helping the Machi curry puff yeah. become better entrepreneur. Yeah. And also you are helping the consumer have more yeah. And better quality yeah. of curry puff, better quality of chocolate and, uh. and everything as well. They, uh. You see, this, this, the sellers, you know, maybe the next sellers to the machi, okay, when they, when they see, oh, everybody is going to that machi stall. And then, you know, because they want to say, I want some of their customer also. So they will create something new also, they will compete. Mm. So that's how. You see, the, 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 the objective of uh, competition act, yeah, is actually to help the small and medium enterprises, including the micro enterprises. You see, uh, because if they really compete with each other, they will only improve themselves. You know, we are just the facilitator. We just tell them, okay, please compete with each other. Don't form a cartel. You know, don't work together. You know, so that you can manipulate the consumer. No. If you work uh, independently through your true strength, I think you can, you know, you can deliver and 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 uh, what do you call that? Uh, go through all these challenges. Okay. Yeah. 
I think the I hope the Machi Curry Pub understand now. And then the, <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, the, the next one is um, the we mentioned a lot of times uh, yeah. in the beginning of this interview the yeah. competition act 2010. Yeah. So maybe briefly tell us what is inside that that act. Okay, the act is based on economic principles. Yeah. Um, so a lawyer. Um, when they want to practice uh, competition law um, areas in the competition law areas, uh, they should appreciate the principle of. I mean, they should understand the principle of economics because we are just enforcing the principle of economics. Yeah, Be the basic one is that the enterprises or the industrial players must compete with each other in their sector. That's that's all. Yeah, um, so. There are three main uh, components of competition law. Okay, the first one is prohibition of cartel. The second one is the prohibition of abuse of dominant position or monopoly position. The third one is merger control regime. So these three is like you know, like your your camera stand. It's like that. It must have these three uh, uh, what do you call that stand to hold that camera. Without one, it will fall down, right? So that's how I want to explain uh, uh, what is competition law. So the first one, prohibition of cartel, is like to us, cartel is the supreme evil under competition law. That's the main culprit, because when everybody, let's say lah, let's say that all the e-commerce player in Malaysia or in Southeast Asia. Okay, because it's a borderless uh, economy, right? They gang up together, and they fix all their prices together. You see, how are we going to benefit? You see, the consumers. You go to Thailand, the price of mango is five ringgit. You go to Malaysia, it's five ringgit. You go to Indonesia, five ringgit. How do you feel? Yeah. So that is. Uh, we are also akin it to daylight robbery. You know when you go to a hypermarket, let's say you have a budget, right? Yeah, and then you have a list. And then let's say you have 10 things, okay? And then you put 100 ringgit in your pocket because that is your budget according to the list, right? So when you go, and then because there is a cartel, let's say among hypermarkets, you have to get the 10 things for 150 ringgit. So what happened? You will be buy maybe five only, but yet you have to pay hundred ringgit. So how do you feel? So basically, if they say if they they are not, uh, they do not form a cartel, okay. Basically, you can get five products at fifty ringgit. So basically, they are taking away your fifty ringgit. So that's why I say they like robbery, right? So it really abuse. Uh, uh, the rights of um, the consumer. The consumer will suffer. And because of that, the consumer will refuse to spend their money. Because it's too expensive. How can they afford? Before this, they can buy two pieces, uh, two pieces of chicken. But now, because of the cutter, they can only buy one. And they have five kids. So how can they live with one piece of chicken? You see, so that is the what you call that, uh, you know, the true face of a cartel. It really burden the people. Okay, that's why most of our cases are against cartel in Malaysia. Okay, uh, the second one is prohibition of a monopoly uh, abuse by a monopoly or a dominant players. A dominant player usually the. How we count, uh, how we deem them to be a dominant player if they control 60% of, of the market. Let's say we take, for example, um, steel. Okay, let's say one company, a company, they control 60% of the market in Malaysia, steel yeah, market. So they are considered dominant. If they control 100%, they are called a monopoly. Uh, that's a difference. If there are two players only, Controlling the market of steel, we call it duopoly. Ah, okay. So anyhow, 
So it's okay in Malaysia. Okay, they have to understand. Okay, because Malaysia market is very small. To find a champion in 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 a sector, in a, you know, in a big sector such as steel, such as cement, uh, you know, maybe you know the the the, the main the main products. Okay, um, is 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 requires big capital. So usually big players will enter. You see, and then. Suddenly, because of their efficiency and and what not, they became bigger and bigger and bigger, and suddenly they monopolize the whole market. Okay, so it's not wrong. Be as big as you want. We don't care. But if let's say a new company wants to enter your market, become your competitor, and when you abuse your position. By foreclosing the market, then we will investigate you. We will take action against you. That's what happened in few cases uh, of our cases. You see, so if someone wants to create competition against you, don't stop them. Let them grow. L you grow on your own strength. Let them grow on their own strength. If they are not efficient, they will exit the market. So what's your problem? You see why you have to, you know, bully that uh, small company or the new entrance? Yeah, because that's the thing. So we are the regulator of competition in the in 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 Malaysia. We want to see competition if possible. But to find an equal and efficient competitor to a monopoly or dominant position, dominant player, it's not easy. Yeah, you require big capital. You see because. They are already big, right? Maybe their 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 annual budget is five billion ringgit per year. So whether you like it or not, if you want to enter the market, you must have the same money as them to compete. You know, if you come with one billion, how can you compete with five billion company or fifty billion company? You know, that's why there must be an equal and efficient com competitor. But it's our job to protect the new entrant. Okay. So the third one is merger control regime. Okay, merger control regime is okay. We want to control people who want to merge with each other. When they merge, they become bigger, right? Uh, so they become stronger. So, but we have to monitor that because once they merge, they will dominate the market. They will or they will monopolize the market. We don't want that. We want competition. If we let them, you know, at their own will, uh, you know, without our supervision at all, they merge just like that. And then suddenly there will be less, less player, less and less player in Malaysia. And then the Malaysian market will be controlled by the dominant players and monopolies maybe. So we don't want that, right? What happened to the macik curry pub? Okay, what will happen to the macik nasi lemak? Okay, when there is a bigger uh, uh, what do you call nasi lemak player in Malaysia, that can sell fifty cents. That much because he's a micro player, they can only sell one fifty. How can they compete with a bigger player? So we have to take care of the small player. That's why I told uh, I, I told you earlier, Competition Act is to protect the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Uh, so those are the three things. Okay, I learned so much <laughs> just from that, that, that uh, question just now. Uh, so I learned so much. So I can give you pop quiz after this, yeah? Yeah, that's, that's that very detailed explanation yeah. of the Competition Act 2010. Yeah. And hey, next, next question. So uh, we talked about the Act already. Yeah. Uh, okay, my next question is on the enforcement. So now you, you said you, um, there's an Act, you take care of the micro uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, entrepreneurs and businesses. Uh, so yeah. how do you enforce? Yeah, we we investigate if there's a uh, complaint. Mm. We investigate and then uh, we will go uh, to the players, to the consumers. We take their statements. You know, we do the usual investigation like the police. We carry out down raids and then we issue decision. Okay, and the thing is, remember I told you just now we are quasi judicial body at the same time. So usually, you know, if you go, uh, if you look at the other authorities in Malaysia, the police, let's say, for instance, okay, if they investigate a murder case, right? So when they complete their investigation, they will pass to the prosecutor office, right? And then the prosecutor office will uh, will will prosecute uh, the accused. 
yeah and then the the judge will decide so there are three bodies the police the prosecutor and the judge but for us everything we do everything under one roof so we investigate we decide we enforce that is a quasi judicial body you see so that's how we take uh, action how that's how we protect the consumers so once they are found infringing the law we will penalize them by taking away their money <laughs> you know business people when we take away their money you know, that's you know that's the hardest part for them you see so like so what are some of the like sort of punishments that that they have uh, yeah, the financial penalty, the imposition of financial penalty, not more than ten percent of their worldwide turnover. Let's say they earn one billion per year, and then they commit that uh, infringement for one year. So we take away hundred million only. Wow. Hundred million only, not much. They got, they, they still got nine hundred million. What? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, 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 next, next, we will get into uh, a few cases. Yeah. All right. Just now we talked about the. Mm. Um, company with dominant position. You yeah. said some company who control almost yeah. the whole market or sixty percent, and we also talk about you know having a monopoly, right? So what are the cases? I think there's uh, some latest cases when it comes. Yeah, to yeah. This. Uh, uh, recently on, on on Monday we got uh, a good news. Um, uh, we issued this decision against this monopoly of this custom information system. They abuse their power. So they appeal against our decision, and the competition appeal tribunal uh, told them that our decision is right. So they have to pay nine point uh, ten point three million uh, as the financial penalty. So we are so happy. Before that, we have uh, a case against my EG. Uh, we won also. Uh, they went through the appeals processes. Uh, we won. Um, and they had to pay 9.6 million. Yeah. So, like, uh, most of our audience will know what is my EG. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, yeah. We do the license. So, like, what, what happened with my, my EG? My EG, you see, uh, when you want, they, they have the monopoly of the, uh, the renewal of uh, foreign workers' visa. So, when they want to renew the foreign workers' visa, especially the employee, the foreign employee or the foreign uh, employer, Okay, uh, when they want to renew, they have to pay, uh, they have to buy certain insurance products. So before that, before my EG was given the task by the government, um, everybody can buy from any insurance company. So when my EG took over that process, the registration for the renewal, they made it mandatory to buy from RHB insurance only. So we, pe people got angry. So they complained to us. So we investigated, yes, it's true. So they abused their position. Uh, and then they got fined. Ah, they got fined 9.6 million. They paid already. Ah, okay. well, that's, that, that's a good one. Yeah. And then the next one, I while you know, doing research for today's interview, I also saw something in the news uh, about, you know, uh, about seven and companies. Yeah. And then something to do with mind debt. Uh. Maybe you can share more about that also. Uh, okay. Uh, we, okay. Uh, on Tuesday, the next day after we received the good news uh, of the appeal uh, by Dagang Net, which they lost, mm. Okay, um, we issue a proposed decision. So after investigation, we complete the investigation. If there's a uh, strong evidence of infringement, we issue a proposed decision first. So uh, it's a big rigging case. So it's about procurement of goods and services for Ministry of Defense, or MINDEF, we call it. Mm. Okay, so um, the seven bidders, they colluded with each other uh, to rig the bid. Uh, so they try to uh, what do you call that eliminate the competition uh, process uh, in the tender itself. So they work together so that they create an illusion that is a competition. In fact, they didn't. Uh, they fill out the, uh, the, the 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 tender form together. They set the price together. You see, they were supposed to do it independently, but they didn't. Yeah. So we issue a proposed decision. So they have to. Um, present their uh, defense through a representation then after that we we only then only we finalize our decision so we expected it to be the final decision to come out next year ah. early next year so so basically is this seven companies uh -huh. for bidding for mindef 
project uh, mindef yeah uh, uh, mindef project yeah. and then they they gang together lah they yeah. to, to create an illusion of competition yeah and and that that's why they were in, they are investigated yeah yeah because the tender is supposed the objective of a tender is to choose amongst them the bidders the best company with the best product at the most competitive pricing at the, uh, the best competitive uh, price lah so you want to choose the best the best among the best right but actually they work together to create the best for us cannot lah <laughs> is it it's wrong <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's wrong so, uh, I, so but but they still have time uh, is it is is only a proposed decision so they can still and uh, present their defense uh, if you can if we accept their defense then they are not guilty lah okay uh, okay Okay, yeah. Look forward to uh, the updates on that. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. we can talk about it maybe yeah. in the future also. So, uh, so today actually there's an exclusive. So when I was talking to your team, you said uh, yeah. this is something that we also oh, yes. talk about. So, so it's something about chicken feet. Ah, huh? yeah. Feet. Ah, huh? is F E E D feet. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the feet. Ah, huh? not, not the kaki. <laughs> All right. Uh, so okay. chicken feet. So uh, maybe tell tell us why chicken feet and why why is it important first. Uh, okay. You see, to grow a chicken, okay, you have to feed the chicken, right? Okay, if you know the nature of the chicken, they won't stop eating, right? Okay, chicken, you throw anything, they will go and eat that. You see, you throw rice, you throw, uh, you throw uh, corns, they will go for it. Okay, but, you know, uh, in Malaysia, the broiler industry, they have certain special food for their chicken so that the chicken can grow in within stipulated time. So, when we calculate the cost of rearing a one chicken, okay, let's say one ringgit per chicken, you will spend around 70 to 75 cents out of that one ringgit on the chicken feed alone. That's how important is chicken feed. It's, the, it's true also with, with, with human beings. We need to eat, right? Yeah. So, uh, every day we spend around, right now, nowadays, 30 ringgit. Last time, my, my time was 10 ringgit per day. 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> 10 ringgit is enough. But because of inflation, it, 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 it increased to 30 ringgit at least per day, right? 10 ringgit, 10 ringgit, 10 ringgit. That is not including your Starbucks, yeah? <laughs> okay. So uh, that's how important it is. So um, we receive uh, we receive a lot of news saying that the price of chicken went up, and then a lot of people saying that oh, the chicken feed price went up. That's why the price of chicken went up. So we investigated the matter, and we found there is a cartel. Among feed millers, the producers of chicken feed. You see, we are so good in Malaysia, we are so good uh, in producing chickens. We, we even supply majority of chickens to Singapore. You know, Singapore, they don't have place, right? They don't have land to rear the, their, their own chicken. Yeah? So we export our chicken to them. So anyhow, so um, we found five players. Um, OK, this is how they did it. Through WhatsApp communication, through, uh, through meetings, uh, through calls, and others, OK, um, they um, agreed to fix the quantum of increase of the chicken feed. OK, let's see. Uh, there are five players, right? Let's say one player, they said, OK, our chicken uh, feed cost 50 ringgit per bag. The B, let's say 55. C, 60. Uh, D, uh, 65. E, 70. But when, when they, OK, we understood that the, 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 the main ingredient of chicken feed, okay, uh, soya bean and maize have gone up. All, o all over the world, it has gone up. Okay? We understand that. Okay? But their formula is different. You see, they, for, their for A, let's say their chicken feed uh, consists of 50%, let's say, soya bean, 20% uh, maize. But for the B, C, D, and E, the percentage is different. You see, so the, their costs are different. But when they raise their price, 
they raise it together at the same quantum. So everybody, let's say, raise three ringgit. So the A will go to 53, the B will go to 58, the C will go to 63, the D will go to 68, and uh, what do you call that? Um, the E will go to 70, 73. So everybody raise by three ringgit. Why? Because there is a kata. They agreed with each other to raise, uh, to increase uh, apa ni, at the same rate. But their price prices are different. Yeah. But they raise at the same rate. Uh, that, that is the thing that we must understand. There are other types of cartel who raise the price at the same price. They say, before this, they are, uh, their price is ranging from 50 to 55. But because of a cartel, they set the price at 60 altogether. But this one is a bit different. They increase at the same rate. Uh, so we caught them. Oh, that, is, uh, that is so important because before, when we were just chatting, we say all the price of everything increase uh, in uh. Malaysia and affects all our lives. Because we, we eat a lot of chicken, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. curry pub, we have to sell the uh, curry pub more expensive yeah. because the chicken now also. <laughs> there's, the there's, there's a curry pub oxygen, you know? Ah. <laughs> the curry pub without the inti. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it affects uh, this chicken feed, even though it's just the feed, it affects you know all our lives yeah. because uh, chicken, as we know, is very important here yeah. in Malaysian food. Uh, so, so what happened then? So, so um, when uh, after the, the 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 completion of the investigation, we issue proposed decision, and then we heard them through their representation. And then when we heard their representation, we decided that we can't accept their uh, defense or representation because we think that uh, it doesn't hold any merit. So um, we found them uh, guilty of infringing the law, Section Four under Competition Act 2010. So we find them. Penalize them. We look at their turnover. Uh, okay. Okay. The thing is, when we penalize cartel or monopoly, we look at the relevant product. Okay. Let's say they sell three things. Okay. Uh, let's say shoe, socks, and uh, um, kiwi. Okay. To 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 you know to make it shine. Okay. But if they are involved. Uh, their cartel only involve the shoes, then we penalize uh, them in accordance to the revenue of their shoes only. Uh, we don't penalize for the three, although they sell three things. So for this, we, we only penalize them for the chicken feed. Okay, from 2020 to 2022. Yeah, so um, the. The financial penalty amounts to all five of them against all five of them are 415 million only, approximately. So the first company is FFM Berhad. Uh, they are fined uh, at around approximately 42.6 million. Gold coin, Sindan Berhad, they are fined at uh, the amount of 97.5 million. Leong Hub Feed Mill, Sinan Berhad, they are fined at the amount of 157.4 million. Uh, PK Agro, they are fined at the amount of 47.8 million. Dindings, um, Dinding, uh, the, the, the uh, what do you call that? Um, the, the full name is Dinding Poultry Development Center, Sinan Berhad. They are fined at the amount of 70 million. So if you add up together, it will, um, it will equal to 415 million only. Wow, it's a lot. You <laughs> see, <laughs> uh, we, you see, um, putting, you know, um, everything aside. When we penalize the enterprises, we follow our guidelines. We have our guidelines on how to penalize. So we follow the guidelines and the law itself. You see? So I think 
this is a fair amount in accordance with the law. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think that is the most important thing today we need to announce in, in today's yeah. podcast. And yeah, I think uh, we, we learned so much things uh. today. We learned, <laughs> there's so many things we learned. What is my CC? Yeah. We learned, you know, how, how it applies to the Machip Kari Pap. Uh, yeah. And Willy Wonka. About, uh, Willy Wonka also. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the chocolate cartel. Uh. And then, uh, you know, we learned about the, the 2010 uh, Competition Act. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and of course, now all these cases, thank you for sharing uh, yeah. it. And it is very important from, from what I see is we, we talk about the rise of costs in Malaysia. Uh. So like just now you said, they, you, they were fined from 2020. To, to now, 2020 mm. was... 2020 to 2022. Yeah, it was, it was the pandemic and the uh. advantage. <laughs> That's why everything, uh. you said the price of, of food and things like that yeah. uh, go up. So, so thank you so much yeah. for doing the work and I know it does help uh, Malaysians to get our cost of yeah, living yeah, low yeah. and uh, keep like, uh. like businesses like me, help us, to all the small, <laughs> you know, yeah, we'll we'll to, to flourish in business. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so last question before we go yeah. is like, you know, uh, without giving too much, I know there's a lot of cases coming <laughs> up. Uh, so what, what can we see from ICC in the near future? Okay, continuous enforcement against cartel. Uh, we received a mandate from the government to pursue uh, enforcement action against cartels. Uh, and then we want to carry out a market review uh, on digital economy. Yeah, it's very important. Digital economy is the thing now. Uh, but we don't know anything, most of the thing of digital economy. We pretend to know, some of us, <laughs> but we actually, we don't know. So we're going to carry out the market review. And then the third one, we're going to amend our law. Uh, uh, we're going to amend our law to include the merger control regime. Uh, so we're going to introduce new power. Remember the three stools I, I told you? So in Malaysia, unfortunately, we have only have two stools, but one more is coming. Uh, I think we are ready. It's not easy, you know, to, to, to enforce merger control regime. We need a lot of people. Thank God uh, the, the government listened to us. They gave us extra budget to expand MyCC. So expansion of MyCC is another um, goal that we are pursuing. Good to hear that. And yeah. I hope uh, when the third one comes in, uh, there's a, a lot of uh, progress <laughs> and a lot of things that you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll try our best. Yeah, so thank you so much for, for sharing with us. I think before we go, I just want to encourage, so today's uh, podcast is with mm. collaboration with the MyCC, uh, uh. the Competition Commission. And uh, don't follow them on LinkedIn. Follow Iskandar Ismail on, <laughs> on LinkedIn, of course. I'll tag him in the post and also on, yeah. on YouTube. And follow MyCC as well on YouTube, on LinkedIn, and all of the other platforms and also their website as yeah. well. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, thank you also, Iskandar, for sharing today. Thank you so much, Bob.